Okay, so let's test your ability to solve a money math word problem. All right, so this is the prom. This is a multiple choice question, but uh, let me go ahead and read the prom right now. It is as follows. Ed has $2.20 in dimes and quarters. He has three times as many dimes as quarters. Ed has how many dimes? All right, so your choices here are A, two dimes, B, five dimes, C, six dimes, or D, 12 dimes. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's go to take one more look at the problem. So uh, pretty straightforward, and again, feel free to use a calculator. Ed has $2.20 in dimes and quarters. He has three times as many dimes as quarters. Ed has how many dimes? All right, so let's go take a look at the answer. Ed has D, 12 dimes. All right, now if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and A plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence for figuring out this money math word problem. Now, uh, notice I didn't say solve the algebra word problem. I am going to use algebra to figure out the solution to this problem, but uh, some of you out there could have used the answers or maybe some other creative uh, way you know, to figure this out, and that's perfectly fine. My only kind of suggestion to you is if you didn't use algebra, just make sure you can kind of justify your conclusions, and the best way to do that is to write down your steps, right? So you, know, you should have some sort of logic uh, and steps written out so someone else could read and understand, you know, your method to solve this problem. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this solution right now. So first things first, first we have a lovely math word problem. So you always want to use the rule of three. Now that is read the problem at least three times before you do anything else. Now, I know some of you are like, hey, Mr. Future Math Man, I'm just so excited to solve this problem. Well, here's what happens if you get in the habit of just reading this thing one time. Uh, this is very typical of all of us, but you'll read it. You'll say, I get it. I got it. I'm, I'm in a rush. I got to get on to the next question. And typically, you can go off in some direction. Then you'll be like, you know what? This is a dead end. I'm not even kind of sure what's going on. And then you go back and you kind of start, you know, start over again. You reread this and then you go off in another direction. So to avoid that, you really need to give yourself a little bit of time for your brain to kick in and take in all the information in the problem and think about a strategy. Okay, so that's why you always want to be a little bit patient. Uh, rule of three. All right, so use the rule of three. But uh, in this particular problem, we have a multiple choice question. So you could say, all right, well, the question is saying how many dimes does... Uh, at half, so if he has two dimes, five dimes, six dimes, or 12 dimes, you could kind of try to reverse engineer this problem to see if you can figure it out. Okay, and I think a lot of you uh, may have done that, and that is fantastic. You should use the answers in a multiple choice question to try to figure out the problem if you can't solve it directly. But sometimes it's just easier to use the answers. Now, if this was not a multiple choice question and it was just an open-ended question like this, well, you have no alternative but to use some math to figure out the right answer. Now, I am going to be using algebra, and uh, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, al you know, algebra word problems just have such a bad rap. A lot of people, are, algebra word problems. I'm not doing algebra word problems versus YouTube math man. Matter of fact, I'm going to unsubscribe and I'm going to go to another YouTube video. Well, don't do that because you need to uh, make friends with algebra. Algebra is simply a tool, and the main concept of algebra is that we use variables, things like x, y, and z. These things here are variables. They represent unknown values, okay? And uh, to figure out what these variables are actually equal to, we like to build equations, okay? So that's really what we're going to be doing in this particular problem. 
And what we need to do is use a variable and uh, some variable expressions to represent the unknown things that we're looking to solve for. So what are we looking to solve for? We're looking to solve for how many dimes, okay? So let's use the variable x, okay? So we have this relationship between quarters and dimes. What do you think x should be equal to? Okay, so should we let x uh, equal to the, uh, be equal to the number of quarters or should we let x equal to the number of dimes in this problem? Now, really, you can let uh, both of these could be correct, but which one do you think is easier? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how I'm going to do this. I'm going to let x equal uh, the number of quarters. Now, why would I do that? Because I know that the problem says uh, he has three times as many dimes as quarters. Okay, so if he has three times as many dimes as quarters and he has x quarters, well, that means he has three x dimes. So I'm going to let... Um, the variable x equal the number of quarters, and 3x will represent the number of dimes. Okay, so now that we have these lovely variable expressions that represent the unknown values here, now I'm only interested in dimes, but we do need to, uh, and I'll bring in quarters obviously in this problem as well, we have some uh, a variable here, right? We have the variable x. Now we can't solve for the actual value of x unless we build ourselves an equation. Okay, so this is where the algebra part comes into it. So how do we build an, uh, an equation? Well, we have to use uh, the rest of the information in the problem to build an equation, solve the equation, then make sure we're, go, uh, we're going to answer the correct question in the problem. All right, so let's go ahead and take uh, this uh, next step, which is just to quickly review the value of coins. Now, we are talking about U.S. currency. So for some of you out there that are watching from, you know, another, you know, uh, place, you know, Europe or whatnot, you know, if you're not familiar with the U.S. currency in terms of coins, these little round things that we carry in our pocket, let's just do a quick review. All right, so here is what we have. We have a, a big thing. I try to make these uh, kind of proportional as well. So the biggest uh, thing that we carry around in our pockets, if we have some change, is a quarter, okay? It's worth 25 cents. And then we have these smaller things called dimes. They're worth 10 cents. And then we have nickels, and uh, a nickel is actually a little bit bigger than a dime, uh, but smaller than a quarter, and a nickel is worth five cents. And then we have a penny, which of course is worth one cent. But uh, here, just in case you didn't know what a quarter is, a dime, or a nickel, or a penny is, let's talk about the value of coins when we're uh, you know, kind of doing some mathematics behind figuring out a money uh, problem. All right, so here, these cents, okay, really what we want to do is use decimal values. So a quarter will be worth 0.25, okay, because we're going to want to tie this in with dollars, okay? So just, you know, you want to have the value of a quarter being 0.25, a value of a dime being 0 0.10, then a nickel would be 0 0.05 of a dollar, okay? And uh, a penny is 0 0.01 because we do have, uh, you know, obviously coins and currency, you know, dollars and five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, etc. So you just want to get in the habit of uh, using decimals to represent the value of these respective coins. All right. So now that we have that behind us, let's go ahead and talk about uh, building in an equation here. So we have to go to this part of the problem now uh, to figure out some sort of relationship uh, where we can build something with an equal sign, okay? So Ed has $2.20 in dimes and quarters. So he has quarters plus dimes, okay? All together, uh, all that is equal to the value of $2.20, okay? So this is our equation. Now, remember, we do have a representation of quarters and dimes, okay? But if you get confused about something, you know, just kind of um, build yourself, you know, a basic equation yeah, just so you can, uh, you can kind of see the relationship. So all his, uh, all of the quarters Ed has plus all the dimes is going to be equal to in value, right? In value uh, is going to be equal to two dollars and twenty cents. All right. So uh, remember, up here we um, have established um, some variables. X is equal to the number of quarters, and three X is equal to the number of uh, dimes. So let's build that equation right now. So what do you think? Okay. So here is what we wrote. So do you think this is a pretty good equation right here? X plus 3X is equal to 220. 
All right, so I think this looks pretty good. What do you think? Matter of fact, go ahead and put your comments uh, about this equation in this particular problem. Uh, go ahead and just do it. Put in some stuff right now. Say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that looks great. Continue to proceed. Or you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you're about ready to make a mistake here. Okay, I'm trying to, oh, that's a terrible little uh, happy face or sad face or angry face. Of course, uh, the best part of doing my videos here is to make up these little crazy characters and whatnot. You're, not, you're about ready to do something really bad here, Mr. YouTube Math Man, because this is not uh, a representation of what the problem is saying. Okay, this is the number of quarters and dimes. Uh, the number, okay, it has nothing to do with the value. Well, it does have something to do with the value, but this is not what we want to say. This is the monetary value of the quarters and the dimes is equal to $2.20. So this is not what we want to do. Now, I bring this up because this is going to be a very common mistake to write the equation in this manner. So what we need to do is write this, okay? So this is how many quarters Ed has, and this is how many dimes he has, but the value is what? We're going to take 0.25 times how many quarters. So if he only has one quarter, well, then he has 0.25 of a dollar because we have $2.20, okay? So we're going to have to have the value of a quarter and the value of a dime. Now, the, a dime is 0.1 or 0 0.10, so it's going to be 0.25 times the number of quarters, plus 0 0.10 times the number of dimes, which of course is 3x, is equal to 220. All right, so now this is the correct equation. And pretty much uh, for the rest of the problem, it's going to depend upon uh, your ability to solve this basic linear equation with decimals. And again, feel free to use a calculator. But uh, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely have to sneak this in to every uh, single one of my videos because I am trying to reach as many people as I possibly can. Now, why am I trying to do that? Because I am a math teacher, and the more people in my classroom, the better, okay? And a lot of people struggle in math, and really, the whole, you know, kind of my main passion in teaching is to help people you know, just become more confident in themselves, right? There's nothing worse than someone saying, you know, I'm not smart, you know, I'm bad, uh, you know, I can't do math because I'm not smart, i just not, you know, able to do this. That's not the truth, but that's very detrimental to people, you know, outside of, their, uh, outside of math, okay? This is not just a math thing. It's like, well, uh, who cares, Mr. YouTube Math Man, if someone can't do calculus or trigonometry? It's not about that. It's about how they perceive their own abilities, okay? And I'm just telling you right now, if you want to learn math or calculus or trigonometry or whatever the case might be, you can do it. But I will be a truth teller, and it does require commitment, uh, great uh, math instruction, and time and effort, okay? So that is the part that a lot of people don't want to hear. So, you know, for those of you that are students, yes, indeed, make sure you do all your homework. You know, you can't say, I'm bad at math, I'm struggling in math. Uh, I need help in math. Well, I would just ask you, hey, are you going to class every day? Are you taking all the notes? Are you doing all the problems? Well, got to make sure you do the work, right? But anyways, I need your help uh, to really try to help as many people in math. This is a major problem, unfortunately, in uh, most countries. And the best way to support this channel is to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well. Thank you for giving me a little bit of time to uh, kind of explain why I do these videos. But now let's move on to the rest of this problem. All right, so we have this lovely linear equation, 0.25x is equal to, or 0.25x plus 0.10 times 3x is equal to 2.20, uh, uh, which is $2.20. All right, so what do we have to do here? Well, let's go ahead and multiply this 0.10 times 3. That gives us 0.3x, all right? So just one step at a time, all right? So now we have 0.25x plus 0.3x. These are like, ter uh, like terms, x and x, so I can combine the coefficients, which are the numbers in front of the x's, so that's 0.25 plus 0.3. So 0.25 plus 0.3 is 0.55x is equal to 220. All right, so now to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0.55. So here we're going to get, get uh, 2.20 divided by 0.55. Again, use your calculator. And uh, at this point, Please don't be a superhero, but like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't need to do that. I'll just do this by using pencil or paper. Don't do that. That's you know, Use a calculator, okay, unless you know how to use a slide rule, which is totally cool. But anyways, uh, 2.20 uh, uh, 2 divided by 0.55 
is four. So x is equal to four. Now, another mistake that a lot of students do is they're like, yay, yay, I am so happy I've solved the problem. And uh, they just, you know, say x is equal to four. Now here, in terms of our multiple choice question, let me go way up here. I don't know if I did that. I should have put in four, okay? I should have put in four right here because if the answer, uh, the answer is not four, but students get excited. Oh, I solved the equation x is equal to four. They see four, they circle it. And that is like the worst type of situation because they were so, 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 so close to getting this thing right, but they weren't paying attention to the things I tell you on this YouTube channel, which is before you leave the problem, make sure you answer the question. And so you need to review the question. The question is, first of all, what is X equal to? Okay, and what is the question? Well, X is equal to, remember in the beginning of this video, we let x equal the number of quarters. So x is equal to four, just tells us it, uh, it has four quarters. But the question is, is how many dimes he has, right? So we have to take that four, plug it in for x right here. So three times four is 12 or 12 dimes. All right, so you know, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you talk a lot in your videos. Well, I like to break things down, okay? Because doing math, is more than I could do this problem in like you know 90 seconds. So I'm like, hey, watch me do the problem. Bit, 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 bit. That's not the value that I'm trying to deliver. Okay, I'm trying to teach you the concepts. I'm trying to teach you how to solve or answer, you know, math questions for those of you that are students, and uh, you know, just common you know uh, uh, mistakes that a lot of people uh, make. And uh, a lot of what I do as well is kind of a I would say a personal development type thing really trying to encourage people to not give up on themselves when it comes to mathematics. And it takes time, okay? So, you know, if I go through a problem nice and slow and break things down, well, that's what you're going to have to do if you're learning things for the first time, okay? So give yourself time. This is a process, but you absolutely can do this stuff. Now, if you like solving algebra word problems, I have a ton of these on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but for those of you that actually need to kind of, you know, take algebra and really learn this stuff, you definitely want to check out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.